in this part of the demonstration, we're going to focus on the transaction analysis part of the accounting cycle. We're going to review accounts that we used in previous sessions and introduce a few new ones. We're also going to introduce T accounts and the rules for debits and credits. On this slide, you'll see the accounting equation. And the accounting equation basically says that assets have to equal liabilities plus owner's equity. From previous sessions, you'll recall that examples of assets can be cash, which is the money companies have in their bank account, accounts receivable, which is really a promise from customers to pay for services that they've already received, supplies, which are supplies purchased for the business that remain unused, furniture as an asset that companies purchase to use in their business, and the new asset that we're introducing in this section is prepaid expenses. Prepaid expenses are basically expenses that are paid for in advance. We've already been using an account um, that we consider a prepaid expense, and that is the supplies account. Now, supplies are purchased in advance of using them, and that's really what prepaid expenses are as well. Other examples of prepaid expenses can be rent. A lot of times, companies can be required to pay for several months of rent in advance. Insurance is another example of a prepaid expense. Usually, insurance companies require companies to purchase at least 12 months worth of insurance on a building or a vehicle in advance of using it. Examples of liabilities are accounts payable, notes payable, and unearned revenue. From previous sessions, you'll recall that accounts payable are basically debts that arise when a company purchases merchandise or supplies or equipment. Usually accounts payable is something that has to be paid for within 30 days. Notes payable is an example of a debt that arises when a company requires longer than 30 days to pay. So an example of a note payable might be um, borrowing money to purchase an automobile. The new account that we're introducing in this session is called unearned revenue. So unearned revenues are created when customers give a company cash and that cash is received before the company actually provides goods or services to that customer. It is considered a debt because the company is required to provide the good or the service to the customer in some time in the future. From previous sessions, you recall that the equity column was used to record one of four transactions, investments by owners, withdrawals by owners, revenues and expenses. A T account is a learning tool that represents an account in the company's general ledger. We'll have a look at the general ledger a little later on in another session. It is basically used to organize the transactions that increase or decrease an account. The way a T account is organized is that the name of the account usually appears at the top of the T account, and I'm just going to label this one with the term cash. When you put the transactions in a T account, the transactions that are debits are always put on the left-hand side of the T account, so this is always the debit side, and the transactions on the right-hand side of the T account are always considered credits. So we have debits on the left and credits on the right. An example of a transaction that increases cash is an investment by the owner. When we put that transaction in the T account, we're going to put that on the debit side of the T account. Another example of a transaction that increases a company's cash account is a sale. When a company uses their cash or decreases their cash, we put that transaction on the credit side of the T account. So if the company paid $450 rent, we're going to put that on the credit side of the T account. A company can also pay salaries, and that's another example of a transaction that decreases the cash account. Once we have all of the transactions in the T account, we're really interested to find out what the balance 
of our cash would be. How much cash does the company actually have? So there are basically three steps that we take when we try to determine the balance of an account. The first step is to calculate the totals of the debit side of the T account and the credit side of the T account. So we're going to add the debit side first. So we have 1500 The total would be $1,500. And then we're going to add up the credit side of the T account. So we're going to add that up and we would get $775. The next step is to calculate the difference between the debits and the credits. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the smaller number and subtract it from the bigger one. So we're going to take that $775 and subtract it from the debit side. When we do that, we get $725. And we're going to write that amount on the debit side because the debits were bigger than the credits. So this balance is considered to be a debit balance in the cash account. We have three types of accounts when we look at the accounting equation. When we look at the accounting equation, you see that we have three types of accounts, assets, liabilities, and equity. We're going to expand the owner's equity section to show the types of transactions that change the equity of the company. We're going to expand the equity section to include the capital of the company. Now in previous sessions, we put investments, withdrawals, revenues, and expenses in that capital column. From now on, the only transaction we're going to put in that capital account are investments from owner. The withdrawals are going to be separate from the owner's capital. Revenues are also going to be recorded separately in their own accounts, as well as expenses are also going to have its own account. When we look at the rules for using debits and credits, each type of account is treated differently. So I'm just going to draw a T account under asset. And if you'll recall, when we look at a T account, debits are always on the left-hand side of the T account, and credits are always on the right-hand side. For assets, debits are always something that increase a company's asset account. A credit is something that will decrease the account. If we have a look at a T account for a liability, remember that debits are always on the left and credits are always on the right. With liabilities, debits make an account go down and a credit makes the account go up. When we have a look at the accounts under owner's equity, the capital account again follows the same, the T account follows the same rules. Debits are always on the left, credits are always on the right. But for capital, debits make the capital account go down and credits make the capital account go up. For withdrawals, again, debits are on the left, credits are on the right, but for withdrawals, debits go make the account go up and credits make the account go down. Then we have revenues. Again, debits are on the left, credits are on the right, but for revenues, debits make a revenue account go down, and a credit makes a revenue account go up. For expenses, debits are on the left. Oh, I just wrote credit. I erase that. Debits are always on the left, and credits are always on the right. For expenses, debits make an expense account go up, and a credit makes the expense account go down. Now these rules seem quite confusing, so what we're going to do is to have a look at a little acronym that we use to help you keep the rules straight. Basically, we're going to have a look at the types of accounts that all go up with debits. We have assets, we have withdrawals, and we have expenses. The acronym we're going to use to help us remember those is WAX. We're going to WAX up debits. And basically what the acronym means is that withdrawals, assets, and expense accounts all go up with debits and down with credit. When you have a look at the other account, the liabilities, the capital, and the revenues, those types of accounts all go up with credits. So for capital, liabilities, and revenues, all of those accounts go up with credit. So the acronym that we like to use to help us remember debits and credits are that we wax up debits and clear up credits.